Very rarely do we have a brand new tool in Photoshop, but that's just what we have today. The adjustment brush tool will allow us to paint adjustment layers in Photoshop, and it's available in the beta today. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're showing you this brand new tool that's available in the Photoshop beta. So if you haven't already done so, be sure to download the beta. If you are a CC subscriber and you have access to Photoshop, you also have access to the beta Photoshop, which is where you can find brand new features like this. So let's go ahead and jump in, show you how to use it. So here's our three images for today. We're gonna to be working with brightness and contrast on this portrait. Here we're going to be working on hue saturation to change the color of our subject's hair. And here we're going to be working on exposure to make our subject stand out from the background. So let's go ahead and click on our first image and hit F for full screen. Now we're going to start by accessing our adjustment brush tool. It's right over here underneath the standard brush tool. So if you can hit B for the brush tool, you can go right down to the adjustment brush tool. This is what it looks like right under your eyedropper tool in the toolbar. Now, up at the very top, you have your contextual taskbar, which will allow you to choose which adjustment you would like to apply, right? It's a contrast, exposure, vibrance, hue, saturation, black and white, or a photo filter. We're gonna keep it on brightest and contrast for now. We have this select subject, which I really like. Basically, it allows us to select our subject and then instantly apply this adjustment to the subject. Fantastic. And up here at the top, you have the basically the same controls, for your adjustment, you have your add or subtract brushes here, and then you have your traditional brush tools, which is nice. Okay, now let's go ahead and start using this tool the way that I think is really useful. We're gonna click right here on select subject. So let's click on select subject, and all of a sudden we can see we have a brightness contrast adjustment on our subject. Now by default, right over here, the properties window is gonna show up, and we have our brightness and contrast. Now. I get they wanted to like show you that actually something's been done, but the default setting of contrast up to 50 is a little bit strong for my personal taste. So we're just gonna set that back down to zero, but here we can see we can adjust the brightness of just our subject, and we're just gonna go ahead and bring it up a little bit brighter. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at our layers panel to see what was actually done. Layers panel, right over here, we can see what was created was just a brightness contrast adjustment layer. So if you've used adjustment layers in the past, you're gonna be very familiar with this workflow. Basically, this is a new way of accessing or creating an adjustment layer. It starts with brushing or selecting the subject and then immediately creates this layer. Okay, now this looks pretty good in my opinion. It's nice that we have a brightness contrast adjustment layer. It's really nice that that was very easy to make. Um, if we want to like get a little bit more with Photoshop, there's some things that I I want to do with this layer and hopefully they can add these things in the future, but I'm going to show you what I would do like right now. So a brightness contrast adjustment layer is really great, but the kind of like the downside of layers like this is it just makes the highlights brighter and it makes the shadows brighter, right? So you wind up with something where it's like the shadows look better, yeah, but now the highlights are a little bit too bright. So here's where I would take this. I'm gonna double click right here to the right of the layer here, just on this gray area, double click right there and we have our layer style, okay? Now you can also get to this simply by going to where it says FX and to blending options. Now we're gonna use a tool called Blend If, and this is going to allow this layer to only be visible either in the highlights or in the shadows. In this case, we want this to be more visible in the shadows. Leave our highlights alone, they're a little bit too bright. And here's how we use this tool. So right over here where we see Blend If, we have two little sliders, one for the current layer and the underlying layer. We're gonna choose the underlying layer. Now over here on the right-hand side, you're gonna see two little uh, like sliders. You wanna hold Alt or Option and click and drag to separate these two out. So by default, they're together. Hold Alt or Option, click and drag that left one, and it's going to allow you to simply drag this from the right to the left. Now, as I do this, I'm, I'm just dragging this from the right to the left. Go ahead and take a look at my subject's face while I'm doing this. So I want you to focus here on my subject fi subject's face while I just take this slider and bring this to the right and left. So you can see, basically, it's making my subject's face properly exposed, okay? So as I bring this to the left, right there about there looks pretty good. You can see I've separated these two sliders out and it's basically gonna hide this layer from the highlights. That's what's going on here. It's a fantastic cool tool called Blend If. So now this is being hidden from the highlights. So let's go ahead and zoom in. 
we can see all of a sudden, this is a very, very useful preset or adjustment that we can make to our image. We can double click right here on the brightness and contrast. And in this case, I'm just gonna bring up my brightness up a little bit now that I know it's not affecting my highlights. This looks fantastic. Now I know that's a little bit more of an advanced feature. We just went into blend if in addition to the adjustment brush tool, but I wanted to show you how to do it because that's kind of like how I think we get the most out of these tools. And maybe in the future, Photoshop is going to add something like that to these tools because again, these are in the beta and right now this is a great chance for them to try new things out. So now let's go into our second image where we're gonna use hue slash saturation to change our subject's hair. So we're gonna go right over here again to your brush tool and then we're just gonna click and hold on that and go to the adjustment brush tool. And you can see B is the keyboard shortcut. Fantastic. Now in this case, right here in our contextual taskbar, we're gonna click there and I'm gonna click on hue slash saturation. That looks great. And we're gonna go ahead and click on select subject. Boom, select subject. Now by default, what it's gonna do, it, we can see in our layers panel, it created a hue saturation adjustment layer and went ahead and loaded our subject into the layer mask. So if you're familiar with traditional masking and adjustment layers, this is not anything new for you. It's just a different way of accessing them. Now, if I go to my properties panel, we're going to see what it did is it took my master slider and it just increased my saturation by 30. Okay, so we can see increasing or decreasing our saturation. That's not exactly what I want to do. The reason why they did this, just increasing the saturation to 30, is to show you that, hey, this tool actually did something. But you can always just take this value, highlight that, and then bring it back down to zero. Now, what I want to do is I want to go right up here where it says master. We're going to go there and go down to blues, okay? I want to affect the blues, and to take this one step further, we're going to click right down here to our eyedropper tool, and I'm going to eyedrop right over here on the actual blues that we want to affect. There we go. So now we started off by selecting our subject and now I'm selecting the blues of our subject. And here's where we're gonna see, go to the hue slider and we're just gonna start to move this hue slider. And now we can see, I can start to change the color of my subject's hair, which is quite fun. Here we go, let's try this like green color. I like that quite a bit. Now, because we are working with the adjustment brush tool, I can do a couple of things. I'm on the same layer. I'm on my hue saturation adjustment layer. Now, you can see it actually colored my subject's eyes, which I don't want, okay? We can simply use the regular brush tool and paint black on the layer mask, or we can simply go right up here and to this minus, you can also access it here in the contextual taskbar. There we go. And I can just minus this out from that area. So now we can see, yes, I was able to make my subject's hair green. It doesn't affect the rest of my subject because I just painted minus and we're good to go. So let's make that visible and visible again. And you can see that works really, really well. So we started off by selecting our subject, going to a hue saturation. Then we chose the blues, changed that to green, and then we chose our minus brush and just subtracted that away from this adjustment. And for our third example, we wanna use the exposure adjustments to make our subject a little bit brighter and make the background just a little bit darker. Okay, so back to the same little tool here, we're gonna go to the adjustment brush tool. We're gonna choose exposure from our drop down menu and let's go ahead and click on select subject. There we go. It made our subject a little bit brighter. In this case, it's just brought up our properties window and we can adjust our exposure. I'm gonna make it just a little bit darker there. Okay, that looks pretty good. And if I go to my layers panel, we can see, yep, it has made an exposure adjustment layer that I can turn off and on at any time. Now, in this case, I wanna create another exposure adjustment and I wanna bring my background a little bit darker. So let's show you how to do that. Now, in this case, I don't see the option to select subject. I have plus adjustment and I could choose another one of these adjustments, but I wanna choose exposure here. Now, in this case, if I start painting around with my exposure, that's totally okay. It's gonna create a new exposure, but I didn't actually wanna do that. I, I want to have select subject be visible right here, okay? So if you wanna select your subject again, what I would recommend doing is just go to your background layer. There we go. And then it kind of resets this tool. So you can see here I have access to my exposure and select subject again. So let's go ahead and click on select subject. Now in this case, I don't wanna make my subject brighter. I wanna make my background darker. So how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna click on this icon here in my contextual taskbar, and that's going to flip my selection. So instead of being affecting my subject, it's gonna affect my background. 
And then I want to take my exposure and actually make this a little bit darker. There we go. We can see I've gone by negative 0.7. So back here in my layers, now we can see I've got my original layer where I made my subject brighter, and then the second layer where I made my background darker. Let's turn those both off and back on, and we can see, let's just zoom out a little bit. With a couple simple adjustments, I'm able to make a lot more attention to my subject and make my background darker, which is going to draw less attention to the background and more attention to the subject. So what do you guys think of this brand new tool in Photoshop, the Adjustment Brush Tool? Basically, it's a different way of creating adjustment layers and layer masks. Now, for me personally, here's some of my thoughts. I think this is going to be really great for people who are just starting to use Photoshop. For those of us who have already been using adjustment layers and layer masks, we might not necessarily gravitate towards this tool as like I'm already like pretty familiar with how to use these like adjustment layers and layer masks in a more traditional sense. Um, I would also like to see more adjustment layers accessible within this tool. The fact that they have left out curves and levels to me limits this tool because actually those, those are my go-to adjustments. I get why they did it because they're a little bit more complex using curves and levels, but I think that the tool would be more powerful if they did include curves and levels. I would also love to see kind of like a replacement or a different way of accessing blend if like we did what we did in our first example where we made this effect only visible in the shadows so it basically brightened up the shadows without affecting the highlights i'd love to see a simplified way of in, like including that with the tool i think it'd be a lot more powerful and my last thought on this tool is i would actually love to see a bit of a rework if i'm totally honest I would love to see it work a little bit more like masking does in Lightroom Classic or Lightroom for desktop and mobile. It'd be great if we could simply brush the area we'd like to select or simply select our subject. And then we'd have a list of sliders like we have in Adobe Camera Raw or in Lightroom where we could adjust our exposure, our saturation, our light levels, our highlights, our shadows, all those things in one place rather than choosing individual adjustment layers. Now, this functionality does actually exist in Photoshop already through Adobe Camera Raw, and it would be really nice to see that ported into this tool, because I feel like Adobe Camera Raw is very useful in Photoshop, but it's kind of hidden, and I wouldn't expect a new user to be able to know how to get to that. So that's one of my thoughts on like, hmm, what would I really like to see this tool do? It, it'd be that. Let me just go ahead and make this adjustment on you know, paint where I would like or make an advanced selection and then give me an entire list of sliders where I could affect everything. I think that would work really, really cool. I would love to know your thoughts. What would you like to see with this tool? Do you imagine yourself using this brand new tool? Are you like a newer user in Photoshop? Does this seem like a really cool like go-to? Maybe if you're an advanced user in Photoshop, do you think you would change your workflow to like start using this instead of using a traditional methods for adjustment layers and layer masks? It'd be really cool to know your opinions. And of course, we can send that feedback to Adobe and maybe your opinion could make it into the full build of Photoshop, which would be super, super cool. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a big thumbs up and I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone.